So we are now here into late April here on the season, and the Reds have gotten off to a bit of a slow start, but they are starting to turn things around here. Six and four in their last ten. They're scoring more runs than they're giving up, so that is a positive sign, and it makes me think that we might be on the right track here with this roster. Some guys who have been hitting well for us have been J.D. Martinez, 906 OPS here through early in the season. Robbie Grossman has been fantastic in the leadoff spot with an 867 OPS. Even Kevin Kiermeyer is hitting so far, not getting on base, but he is slugging enough to have his OPS, OPS up in the 800s. And then you also have Jake Bowers, who has been good on the uh, platoon as the first baseman only against right-handed pitching. And then if we flip things over to the pitching side of things, there's Hunter Green, who's been very good here. ERA and FIP in the mid-twos. And then, unfortunately, Seth Elledge is not get, he's just not getting any innings whatsoever in the sim. So we're just going to go with the extra bench bat instead. I really, really hate in this game how there's 26-man rosters in the major leagues now. But MLB The Show still hasn't coded their game to the point where you can have 26-man rosters. So, like, you can, but the AI looks at your team like you only have 25. So you have to choose between having a reliever who's literally only going to get, like, four innings pitched all season long, or having a bench bat who's going to get, like, 60 ABs. Unless I wanted to go in and literally quick manage every single game, which I'm not doing. So as that extra bench bat on our team, we're going to be calling up Matt Theis from AAA. And then we did make a quick lineup update as both Robbie Grossman and Brian Anderson are now 1-2 in the order. We're just trying to get that super OBP at the top. Ideally, both these guys have almost 400 OBPs, and they're just lining up RBI opportunities for Stevenson, Martinez, and Jonathan India. And we are about to play the Colorado Rockies, so let's take a look at how their roster is looking currently. And as you can see, their two best players are the big splash acquisitions they've made throughout this series in Rafi Devers and Luis Severino. Unfortunately for them, Ryan McMahon, one of their better players, is currently on the IL with a fractured forearm, so he's going to miss a good chunk of time. And they also have a couple young outfielders on their team. First one being Zach Veen, who appears to be their starter in center field, a potential 22-year-old, very solid-looking player for them. And then they also have Benny Montgomery, who appears to be like their fourth outfielder, a potential 21-year-old, also pretty solid player. Not, doesn't look as good as Zach Veen, but he is one year younger and still a very solid player. Well, the pitching side of things for them, their pitching staff, their rotation is pretty much unchanged, aside from Luis Severino as the ace. And then they also have just a pretty lackluster bullpen. Old friend Amir Garrett of the Reds is in their bullpen, but a lot of other guys who just really aren't really up to, up to standards there. I believe Robert Stevenson is also a former Red. It's a day game here in Cincinnati as the Reds are going to be playing host to the Colorado Rockies here at Great American Ballpark. And towing the slab for the Reds on the day will be the left-hander Brandon Williamson making his sixth start here in 2024. We'll start things off top half of the first inning. Garrett Hampson laying down a surprise bunt to start off the game. And Brian Anderson says no, no. Incredible play from him over on the hot corner to charge the bunt. But unfortunately, Williamson would then walk the next batter in Connor Jones. Joe, and then Rafi Devers shows why they signed him. Powers one at the right center field. Kevin Kiermeyer cannot make the catch, but unfortunate, but fortunately for us, the runner thought he was going to, so Joe only moves up the third base. So second and third here. Ground ball over to first. They do not send the runner. Feist just steps on the bag to make two down, and then it would be Chris Bryant who grounds the ball through the infield, and that's going to score one. The second run trying to come around, but the throw from Kiermeyer guns Devers at the plate so they only go up one nothing here move things on bottom half of the frame Antonio Senzatella on the hill ground ball into the hole and Garrett Hampson pays the returns the favor to Brian Anderson as he makes the jump through from the outfield battlefield gra grass there and then in the bottom of the second it would be Martinez singling and then Matt Theis also singling in the inning so first and second here for the Reds and it brings up Joe Adele rocking the high socks ripping one into right center field that one's going to get down in front of the center fielder and it'll score one run here as the Reds tie the game with an RBI double from Joe Adele brings up Taylor 
walls. He does what he does, works the count, and draws a walk. Next batter up is Kevin Kiermeyer, and unfortunately, he chops into a 6-4-3 double play, and that would end the inning. So still a 1-1 game here, on to the bottom of the third where Robbie Grossman connects on a pitch, hits it off the bottom of the wall in the right field corner. That's an easy two-bagger there to lead off the inning for him. Now with one out, it's Tyler Stevenson, who's also going to go down the right field line. This one lands barely fair, scores Grossman easily, and it now is a 2-1 lead here as Stevenson trots into second base. And then with two outs, Jonathan India powers one at the right center field, and this one's going to hit off the wall in right center, and that's going to be another double in the inning. Three doubles, now a 3-1 lead here for the Reds. Move things on top of the fourth, and it's Zach Veen, one of their top prospects here, powering one into his team's bullpen. It's a solo shot off the bat of Veen. It makes it a 3-2 game here in Cincinnati. We'll now move things on top of the sixth where Alex, Alex Reyes comes on here for the Red Legs. And first batter facing is Devers, gets him to go down on the 12-6 curve. After that, it would bring up C.J. Crone. And he's also going to go down swinging on the slider this time. So quick two outs for Reyes, and then he proceeds to strike at the side, blowing the fuzz right by Chris Bryant. Three Ks in the inning, move things on to the top of the ninth, where Lucas Shortlease Shims comes on for the Reds, looking for the save, and he would proceed to just get that. Works a 1-2-3 inning, strikes that Brendan Rodgers to end the game, as the Reds hold on here by a score of 3-2 to two at Great American Ballpark. They come away with the win. Player of the game honors goes to Tyler Stevenson on the day. He went two for four, had two doubles at the dish. Grossman, India, Adele also each had a double on the day. And then Brandon Williamson with a pretty solid five innings pitched, five hits given up, three strikeouts, did walk two batters, but only gave up two runs as the Reds and Tim get the win on the day. And now we are here into May on the season here in the 2024 campaign, and we are about to play the Arizona Diamondbacks. And the thing to know about them is that they love catchers. Nobody loves rostering catchers like the Arizona Diamondbacks. This offseason, they signed Yasmani Grandal to their team on a one-year deal, so they have him on the roster. They still have Carson Kelly, who is also a very good catcher in this game. They drafted last season Arthur Adams, who is an a-potential 22-year-old catcher, looks really good, currently down in AAA, could easily be their best catcher in the big leagues right now. And then if we take a look at their lineup, you can see on the bench, they've actually got Jose Herrera sitting on the bench as a third catcher on the Major League roster. And like I said, they have Adams, so if they really wanted to, they could roster four catchers because those are some of their best players for whatever reason. But one of the notable changes to this D-backs team is they are trotting out Alec Thomas in center field every day. He is a pretty highly tatted prospect in real life. I do know he's playing center field for them in real life as well up in the big leagues. And then their shortstop is this guy Ryan Bliss, who I've never heard of in my life before. I'm sure he's a, you know, at least like a top 30 prospect for the D-backs, but I've never heard of him before. And now before we hop into the game, there is a few things we have to go over with our team. The first thing is that it's finally time to do something about the third base situation here in Cincinnati. Many of you have probably noticed that Nolan Jones put up very bad numbers last year, and he's also putting up very bad numbers this year. So it's finally time we do something about sending him down to AAA. Unfortunately, he has not been the guy that we thought he would be. Maybe a time down in AAA will hopefully get him some developing more and maybe he'll come back up at some point and be much better. But for now, we are going to be sending him down there and calling up from AAA is going to be Ellie De La Cruz. It is time. He is up in the big leagues now. He does not have the best AAA numbers down there this season, but he's also currently on a hot streak. So we're going to roll the dice and see if he continues to be on that hot streak here in the big leagues. He will be wearing number 34 at the big league level. And then we aren't just making that change. We're also ending this first place, first base platoon experiment. Jordan Luplo, only like 50-something ABs, but he's been bad in those ABs. So we're just saying, screw it. We're getting rid of him. He's going to go down. He's going to get DFA'd and released. So he is no longer in the organization. 
And to take his spot on the big league roster, we are going to be calling up Pavin Smith from AAA Louisville. He has been fantastic down there this season, a 9.96 OPS and 114 ABs. He's being rewarded with a call up to the big show, and he will be wearing number 46 at the big league level. So if we take a look at the new look lineup for the Reds, there you have it. Once again, here at Great American Ballpark, it is the Reds playing host to the Arizona Diamondbacks, and it is a special day as Ellie De La Cruz is making his Major League debut here for the Red Legs, starting at third base here, hitting, I believe, seventh in the order. Take a look at his AAA stats this season. And then towing the slab for the Reds on the day will be the right-hander Tyler Malley, making his eighth start here in 2024. And then also take a look at the Reds lineup on the day listed 1-2-9. I was correct. He is indeed hitting seventh. So we'll start things off top half of the first inning. It's Dominic Fletcher, the leadoff man for the D-backs, grounding out immediately to Ellie De La Cruz. Welcome to the big leagues. And then the inning would come to an end as Cattell Marte chops one over to first base and Pavin Smith makes the play. So move things on top two now. Yasmani Garandal draws himself a walk as he spits on that ball four to lead off the inning. Next batter up would be Nico Goodrum, who also draws a walk. So back-to-back -back base on balls here for the D-back. So it's two on, nobody out. But then a dribbler back to the pitcher. Maley goes to first with it. And it's now second and third with one out. Brings up Alec Thomas, who flies one into pretty deep center field. This is going to be out number two. Should easily tag up Grandal, but the perfect relay throw from Taylor Walls guns the slow Grandal at the plate, and the D-backs get no runs in the inning. What a relay from Kiermaier to Walls, and then the tag from Stevenson. Move things on, bottom of the second now. It's Jonathan India hitting a ball into left center field. That's going to land down in, and he's going to hustle his way into second base here for a double to kick off the inning. Next batter up is Jake Bowers, who grounds one over to the right side of the infield. That would be an out for him, but it does move up India 90 feet. And then Ellie De La Cruz, first Major League AB, first Major League hit, right center field, Gapper drives in a run and puts the Reds up 1-0. Congrats to him. First Major League hit is an RBI double. And now we move things on later in the inning as De La Cruz on second base, pitch in the dirt, kind of gets caught in no man's land out there, thinks about moving up, decides to dive back in, ends up being caught at second base. So then Taylor Walls at the dish, 3-0 count, sends one out to right center field. Walls continues to hit here this season. He'll trot on into second base, sliding head first for a double. Unfortunately, that probably would have driven in De La Cruz. But then Kevin Kiermeyer hits a ground ball up the middle, and Walls scores from second on the ground ball, and Kiermeyer beats it out. So it's a 2-0 lead now here for the Reds. We will move things on to the bottom of the third, where Robbie Grossman delivers with some power. A solo shot off the bat of Grossman makes it a 3-0 lead now here for the Reds as they start to really take the lead here. And now bottom in the fourth. And it's Jonathan India drawing a leadoff walk, puts himself on first base. Then Jake Bowers comes up, grounds one up the middle of the infield. And that's back-to-back -back base runners here for the Reds. First and second, nobody out for Ellie De La Cruz once again, playing some small ball, laying down the bunts. But he's going to use his speed and get on first base. No throw to first, so bases are drunk here. And that'll end the pitcher's day. It brings on Humberto Castellanos out of the bullpen here for the Snakes. And it's base is drunk for Taylor Walls and he delivers. Right field up against the wall. That's going to clear the bases. Taylor Walls rounding second, heading to third. It is a three RBI triple for Taylor Walls. I believe actually it was a double and he moves up on the throw, but still extra bases. Six nothing lead and then a ground ball from Kiermaier makes it a seven nothing lead as they really break this one open. Top of the fifth, the Snakes do get on the board though as Ryan Bliss grounds one past the diving glove of De La Cruz to make it a 7-1 game. But then the next batter up would be Fletcher, who then grounds into a 5-4 double play. De La Cruz tags and then fires to second. Pretty sweet way to turn the double play. Top of the sixth, Tyler Malley gets Goodrum to strike out. And then top of the seventh, it would be Diaz grounding out to shortstop Walls as Maley works another scoreless frame. Move things on to the bottom of the seventh now where Dolis Guerrera comes on from the D-backs and facing J.D. Martinez here. 
Goodbye. Absolutely crushed to left center field. That one's way out of here, and now it's an 8-1 to one lead here for the Reds. Their bats have exploded in this game. Later on in the inning, it's Jake Bowers drawing himself a walk, so he'll take first base. Next batter up is Ellie De La Cruz. A little bit of a swinging bunt action here, but he's going to use his speed and beat it out at first base. So first and second here, one out brings up Taylor Walls, chops one over to second. They try to go 4-6-3, but instead get nobody as the throw from the second baseman pulls Bliss off the bag. So bases are juiced for Kiermeyer. This scores one. Second run coming around. That'll score as well. It's a two RBI single for Kiermeyer. As it's now a 10 to 1 game here in Cincinnati. That would end Castellanos' day as Stefan Crichton then comes out of the bullpen for the Snakes as the Reds were not done in this inning. Second and third, one out. Robbie Grossman hits the ball into right field. It is going to be caught. Both runners will tag up, make it an 11 to 1 game. And then they still aren't done. Now it's Brian Anderson at the dish. He's hit by a pitch, makes it runners on the corners here with two outs. And that would bring up Tyler Stevenson. And he delivers with a hit of his own. Grounds one through the infield, drives another one makes it a 12 to 1 lead here for the Reds and that would pretty much just end it the Reds do tack on a couple more as they or one more as they win this game 13 to 2 is the final score just an absolutely offensive onslaught and a great day on the hill for Tyler Maley as well Ellie De La Cruz in his major league debut, just a phenomenal day. Picks up player of the game honors for a five for five day at the dish. Had a double, four singles on the day. Drove in an RBI in his first debut. Tyler Malley goes seven innings strong, only gives up five hits, strike at six D-backs batters, only walks two, and gives up only one run. Taylor Walls in the day went two for five with two doubles, three runs driven in, three runs scored. Robbie Grossman went three for four with a home run. J.D. Martinez had a home run. The Reds totaled 18 hits on the day as a team. And now before we move on to the next game, we do have a little bit of an update to do as Justin Dunn is going to be sent down to AAA Louisville. He has been quite disappointing here this season. He is walking more guys than he's striking at, as you can see by his walk rate. I believe he's got like 25 walks and like just as many innings. So that's just unacceptable, and he's going to be sent down to AAA, and taking his place here up in the big leagues is going to be Josh James, who has been fantastic in AAA this season. He has 16 strikeouts through 12 innings pitched, only three walks. He's being rewarded with a call-up to the big show. And we are about to take on the St. Louis Cardinals, who are an absolutely stacked team. As we are familiar with, uh, they've added Jacob deGrom, Trey Turner, Sean Murphy, Taylor Rogers to their bullpen, Sean Manaya and Taiwan Walker to their rotation. They have lost a couple guys like Jack Flaherty and Harrison Bader, but still a very stacked team. I mean, the worst arm in their rotation is Tyler Anderson. And, I mean, that's a perfectly fine fifth starter. And then their bullpen is really stacked as well. One thing I've noticed in this in this series, looking at teams around the league, is a lot of teams are just really having, like, high 60 overall guys just littered throughout their bullpen. But the Cardinals are not that. They have a stacked bullpen. And then, like I said, they lost Harrison Bader in free agency, so they did lose their defensive gem at the uh, middle of their outfield there up in center. But uh, now in center field, it's going to be a bit different, as they've got Joshua Baez, who's a 20-year-old C-potential prospect, and he's not really a defender. I wouldn't say he should be playing center field. I would say maybe O'Neal or Carlson moves to center field, and one of them... And then Baez can play the corner or somebody else can play the corner because Baez probably should not be playing center field. Has a lot of pop in his bat. Not the best defender. I'd say he's more suited to be a corner outfielder. But to their own, the, the Cardinals are going to play him in center field and see how it goes for them. And now once again at Great American Ballpark, the Cincinnati Reds are going to be playing host to the St. Louis Cardinals in an NL Central matchup. On the hill for the Reds on the day is the right-hander Hunter Green, the hard thrower, making his eighth start of the season. And then opposing him will be the right-hander Taiwan Walker, picked up in this offseason by the Cardinals. Take a look at the Reds lineup on the day, listed 1-2-9. And we'll start things off here in the top half of the second inning, where Hunter Green started off 
Fantastic. Strike sets Tyler O'Neill on the slider. Next batter up, Paul Goldschmidt blows 101 right by him for at number two. And then for the third out with a runner on first, strikes out Dylan Carlson looking. He's a pair of shoes up there. Fantastic second inning. Now we move things on bottom of the third where Nick Senzel is going to be plunked there. He'll take his base to lead off the inning and then he goes and swipes second to get himself into scoring position. So Senzel over on second now with one out, and Brian Anderson comes up to the plate and hits a ball into right center field. That's going to be caught by Baez, and the runner does tag up to third. So now 90 feet away, but with two outs, it's Jonathan India who draws himself a walk. So runners on the corners here for the Reds, and now India proceeds to go and steal second base. So two runners in scoring position here for the Reds as he swipes his 12th bag. And then Stevenson works a full count, and he spits on ball four, and he'll also walk. So the bases are drunk here with two outs for the Reds. And J.D. Martinez comes up and proceeds to continue hitting. A ground ball through the infield makes it a 2-0 lead here for the Reds. Sets up runners on the corners now for Jake Bauer. Works a count full, hits a ball hard, but unfortunately it's right at Dylan Carlson. So it's only a 2-0 lead for the Reds. We move things on top of the fourth where Green once again just going to work. Strikes at Tommy Edmund to start the inning. Then Nolan Arenado hits a ball right at Nick Senzel who makes the snag at at third, playing there today while De La Cruz plays short as Walls gets a rest and then ends the inning and by striking at Tyler O'Neill again chasing the slider. Now we are on to the top of the fifth inning where Paul Goldschmidt's going to hit a ball into the hole. Ellie De La Cruz does a great job getting to it, jump throw over to first, but unfortunately Goldschmidt beats it out. But then the very next play, another nice play here by De La Cruz goes to second. They do not have the play at first, so the runner reaches on a fielder's choice, and then that runner at Mundo Sosa goes and swipes second base. So runner on second here with one out. Dylan Carlson at the dish. He's going to hit a ball into left center field. This one's going to get down into the gap off the wall and that is going to score the fleet-footed Sosa from second base as the Cardinals cut the lead in half it's now a 2-1 game move things on bottom of the fifth and Kevin Kiermeyer continues to hit some extra base hits here goes off the wall in right center that's going to be a leadoff double for him but unfortunately while out on second base ball in the dirt dives back into second and he was hurt on this play Trainers think that he could be out at least on a short IL stint, so we'll have to see how it goes. But uh, coming out of the game is Kiermaier, and coming into play shortstop now is Taylor Walls as De La Cruz moves back to third, and Kiermaier, uh, and then uh, Senzel moves at the center field. So now Taylor Walls at the dish here in the bottom of the seventh as nothing else happened that inning. Uh, gets a single at the right field. Then Brian Anderson lays down a perfect sack bunt to move up Walls in a scoring position. And then Jonathan India rips one into left center field. And he is not going to get a base hit here as this is going to be caught by O'Neal in deep left. Tags the runner up and brings up Tyler Stevenson. Works the count full and it's going to be an RBI single. So a 3-1 lead here for Cincinnati. They would take that into the top of the ninth inning where Lucas Sims comes on looking for the save and he gets just that. Pops up Josh Baez into shallow center field as that is the end of the game. The Reds beat the Cardinals here at home by a score of 3-1. Hunter Green gets your player of the game honors as he was fantastic on the hill today. Six and two-thirds strong. Only gave up four hits, eight strikeouts, only two walks, and one earned run on the day. Dave the Cruz went one for three. He had a single and a double, or a single and a walk with two stolen bases. J.D. Martinez had a two-run single. Stevenson had an RBI single. And then Sims continues to be much better this season with another shutdown inning. Picks up his 10th save here in 2024. But the unfortunate news is that Kevin Kiermeyer was seriously hurt diving back into that bag. It's not just going to be a short IL stint. It's going to be the season. A torn MCL for Kevin Kiermeyer, so 60-day IL. That'll be his 2024 campaign, and that'll be his Reds career as well. He will miss the rest of the season. And being called up from the minor leagues, we thought about Jay Allen, but he is unfortunately off to a very slow start down in double A, so I did not want to call him up. Instead, we are going to be calling up Adrian Merced from AAA. 
he will now be the everyday center fielder in the big leagues. So take a look at what the lineups look like here. And that will wrap things up here for this edition of the Cincinnati Reds franchise here on MLB The Show 22. I've been your host, Jersey Born, and I am saying, stop with the UFC events in the apex.